Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios, and welcome to my video on how to stop Vegas Pro 17 and Vegas Pro 18 from crashing. A lot of these steps are almost identical with some differences. And of course, I'm going to stop the video and go to me where there's little differences where you have to consider that change. Now let's get started. Okay, for Vegas 17 or 18, we want to start the same exact place. We want to start with going to Options and Preferences. Remember, these are both identical here. You'll want to make sure you click on that Video tab that's in Preferences. So Dynamic RAM Preview, you want to go to 10% of your available memory. If you have 32 gigs, which is 32,000 megabytes, you want to go to 3200, not more than that, because this is just Preview Memory, Preview RAM. You don't want to stuff it all in your RAM um, because then you're going to actually limit what your program can run. And your maximum number of rendering threads. This is what your CPU has. You want to consider what your CPU is. That's something you want to know. How many cores do you have? How many threads do you have? So let's say you have 16 cores and threads combined. You can put this as 16 for your maximum, just an example. But I found it to be even slightly more stable if I put exactly the number of cores. I'll let you choose. It'll be a little bit slower with eight cores, like if you just use eight cores rather than cores and threads. However, it is more stable to put exactly what your cores are. So I'm gonna put it to eight, because I have a 3800X, a Ryzen processor. So you might wonder what this does by limiting the number of cores, threads you have. Well, you might notice that your rendering is crashing from time to time. This actually stops the rendering crashes you may be experiencing by limiting your number of cores, threads you have that you have used. Do not go below the number of cores you actually physically have. Some people are doing this as a joke online. Don't fall for jokes. Your cores, for your thread, what it says there, just put your CPU cores, you're good. You could put cores and threads, but I still found I had the odd crash when I did that. So to eliminate that, you can just go with your cores. You have a four core CPU, stay with four cores. So if you don't know the number of CPU cores you have and threads, just download CPU Z from CPU ID and of course you download your uh, English version or whatever well English or Chinese whatever language you are and of course you can get it set up or zip I usually get set up so I just can double click on it and install it so once you have CPU ID installed you can run your CPU ID program and when it's finally loaded you'll see it tells you how many CPU cores and threads you have so right here it says eight cores and 16 threads, but generally running with how many cores I have for my CPU gives the most stability. And GPU acceleration for video processing, this is important. So you want to choose your GPU, make sure it's set. So if your GPU is in NVIDIA, AMD, or off, you don't have a, if a GPU to per se. Um, so that's going to be your choice there. So what you have for graphics. And of course, you're going to click apply on this now. It just comes up with this menu uh, that lets you know change preference and all that fun stuff. So this can be the same whether it's a uh, Vega 17 or 18. And now another thing you want to go to is depreciated values. And of course we are going to want to enable the QuickTime plugin, but you can't enable it until we download, well, QuickTime. So let's go to that. Download Apple QuickTime is one word. And then you're going to go to support Apple, download QuickTime. So it's going to be your link. And I'll put that down in the description below so you know where to go. So this is if you get add-on software. So if you get AE Juice, for instance, or BusyBox, or whatever the case is, a lot of them have movie files and they require QuickTime. So there's Macintosh version, there's Leopard Browser, or whatever the case is. In my case, I'm Windows. So I'm going to go to the newest version here and then you click download for Windows. In my case, I've already downloaded this, installed this, and then of course you're gonna run it. And once you do that, you wanna click enable the QuickTime plugin. And on Vega 17, again, it's also enable the QuickTime plugin. You can click apply on both of them. So in my case, I have both, so I'm doing it with both here. 
And of course, that allows you to open, say, your different software. So if I want to uh, go to my add-ons, such as a Blockbuster pack, and I want to preview uh, one of the items, such as the explosion or whatever the case is, if without QuickTime, I can't do this. So that is the software I need to, in order to do anything here, so I can actually use these add-ons. This particular setting is Vega 17 only. File, I, O. Tab is what you want to go to. It's all the way at the right side of these tabs. So now, if you don't have an Intel CPU running, like if you have a, you don't have a modern GPU, you don't want to enable legacy HVAC decoding with a uh, Intel QuickSync. So unless you're just running an Intel CPU and uh, with built-in graphics, leave that enabled. Otherwise, disable that. And again, you disable it here. So if you're running an AMD GPU, use AMD UVD. If you're running an NVIDIA graphics, run NVIDIA NVDEC. This particular setting I'm showing right now is for Vegas 18. File I.O. You want to enable after you run a file because you want the file uh, want it to load. So if you have just did a fresh install, you may want to run a file just so it loads the drivers that are needed to read the file type itself. Then you can enable legacy AVC decoding and enable legacy HVAC decoding. It actually slows things down, I believe, slightly, but it stops it from crashing. I tried it without check marking it, but it's very, very difficult, especially if you have any different file types they load in, which kind of is no fun. That slows things, things down slightly. Hardware decoder, leave it as auto. But if your graphics card shows up, be it AMD or in NVIDIA, choose that and click apply. This particular setting is Vega 17 only. Okay, what you're going to do now is hold down the shift key. So you hold down the shift key, then press options. And when you go to preferences in Vegas Pro 17, you'll now see internal available right on the right side in the middle. You want to click that. Then you want to type in open CL forward slash. And you'll say this, see this is open to true. So this is an old version um, of a decoder. So you want to actually change this to false with caps locks on. And then just click on a different uh, box here. So you can actually click apply and click OK. And then do the same thing again. Press shift, go to options, preference again. You're going to go to the same internal again. And this time you're going to type in S04. And you'll see enable S04 compound reader. So changing this to false will disable 10-bit footage. However, it makes it a bit more stable if you're actually not working with 10-bit footage. But if you are, like I have a Sony A7R3, for instance, you'll have to leave that as true. Otherwise, with cap locks on, type in false, hit apply, and click OK. And then, of course, you're going to click on the next box down and click apply. OK. OK. This particular setting I'm showing right now is for Vegas 18. So now in Vegas Pro 18, we're going to do pretty much the same thing here. We're going to hold down the shift button, hit options, but you'll see below preferences now internal showing up. So you click that and we're going to do the same sort of idea of open CL forward slash. And you see an able OpenGL interlope Intel GPU. Well, if you're not using an Intel GPU to actually do it, like for built-in graphics, you most likely want this turned off. And so you would want to change it to false. If you're using an Intel GPU built in, no GPU graphics at all, maybe you're using a laptop or whatnot, and you don't have a graphics card, you may want to keep that enabled. Otherwise, false. Because if you disable it, you may have crashes. And now also disable Open GL interlope. And you want to click apply. Okay, okay. So you'll also want the newest drivers for your graphics card. So if you have AMD or ATI per se, which if you have an old graphics card, download the latest drivers for your graphics card from, well, I'll have the links below. And in NVIDIA, again, 
you want the latest graphs card drivers, the links will be below in the description. And with NVIDIA, you have the studio drivers and you want the studio drivers to the best ability and the best speed. Of course, with the studio drivers, the difference between the main one and the studio, the studio ones made for video rendering and stuff like that. You don't have the latest game ready updates on those drivers. If you want the latest game ready updates, go ahead and download the game ready regular GeForce drivers. But if you want the best, get the studio. Now for our last step, we want to download the Radeon software if you're AMD. This is for AMD graphics cards only. You might want to go to Auto Detect if you don't know what you have. If you know what you have, let's say out of 5600 XT, you can see here, I can go to here, here, submit. Okay, let's see. Go back again. 5600, there. RX 5600, let's say I have 5600 XT, which I don't have. Click Submit. Then I can see whatever software I need for whatever copy of Windows. I got Windows 10, so I normally click on uh, download the drivers here. Now, if I have an NVIDIA graphics card, I can also auto download the drivers or I can choose it. So in my case, I do have a 1060, a 10 series, sorry, 1070, sorry. And then I choose my 1070. I choose my operating system, which is Windows 10 64 bit. And in my case, I'll want to go to studio drivers. I want the most stable. If you just want a regular game ready driver, just choose that. But the studio drivers will give you the best stability. The game ready drivers will give you the latest game updates. So if your games run faster, if you're game focused. So, and then download the latest studio drivers. One thing I want to point out is if you're overclocking much, Vegas will find instability. Be careful about overclocking if that's what you're doing. The next thing as well, make sure that you have a proper amount of RAM. If you're doing 1080p footage, have at least 16 gigs of RAM because you may run out of memory and then you'll lose your footage and whatnot in terms of your editing, that is. And if you're doing 4K files, honestly, get 32 gigs of RAM. Do yourself a favor because once you're doing much many files for editing, you will run into stability issues and bad, bad stutters just not worth it. And if you're doing beyond 4K, well, respectfully, get more RAM. And in case you wondered, graphics card RAM memory does matter. If you actually run out of memory, it's not going to run as nice and that can render as nice. It's a good idea to get a card even 8 gigs of RAM or more. Everything helps. Because when it's actually GP rendering, it's actually using your memory pool on your graphics card. Now, there's one thing you might have not noticed as well. Let's say um, BusyBox, for instance, my footage was 4,000 something by whatever rather than the regular 4K my camera does. And I, after about a minute, I get really bad flicking with my images. To fix that, just re-render those files. You might build render at the same resolution, but I render them down to the same as my camera files because that tends to work really, really well that you don't have errors anymore and keep the frame rate where it was. Don't reduce the overall quality. I'm just telling you to do yourself a favor because you want all your effects to stay at proper quality and not have to re-download if you don't need to. So just a little pro tip there because a lot of people don't know that and you know, it's like fighting with the program. I hate fighting with Vegas, honestly. And in some cases you may have different effects constantly happening and you have problems with flickering or going back to where it shouldn't been or the effect was like, in my case I have uh, what's called Boris effects and I have uh, the shattered effect. Sometimes it would go kind of funny on me once I add too many effects. So you'll have to, what you do want to do is remove that effect and then render it, then add it in again. So that's a little bug with Vegas that I've been contending with, but that's a little tip there for you. Hope that works for you. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day.